What's up, everybody? This is Tower 7200 here, List of Ding News. It's kind of dark out here, so let me go ahead and flip on the infrared light. But this is going to be a little tour of the multi, of the main living room TV setup, or the multimedia station. So I'll go ahead and uh, get started with the video. Okay, so this is mainly going to be about the living room setup. Now, my grandma uses this TV more than me. I barely even use this machine or this this station. The only time I really use this station is to watch movies with my grandma. That is it. Other than that, this is practically my grandma's setup. She does everything here. So let's get over what we got going on here. So right here, we've got an old Panasonic TV. It's a uh, Varia, whatever the hell it is, and sorry for the infrared light, it's all I have to really light up the area. And so I'm really sorry about the poor lighting. And it's a 47 inch TV, I'd say that it is old. And people say, oh my god, it's so small in the area. I mean, like, compared to the... People say that you should at least have a TV that fits the width of the wall or whatever. People said that I should have a TV that big as that mirror. And to be honest with you, anything bigger then this TV is honestly pointless. For me, in my opinion, I see absolutely no reason to have anything bigger than a 47 inch. For watching movies, of course. If you're playing a video game, something bigger with a higher pixel density would be nicer, but essentially, I think it's a dumb idea. Being that this TV is only really used to watch movies and to be hooked up to the cable, there's really no ideal point of having such a nice setup. It is a nice TV though, and uh, one of the reasons I really like this TV is it has a built-in card reader on the side. I don't know if you can see it. So what I actually did for a long period of time is I actually decoded a bunch of, um, I decoded a bunch of, uh, DVDs and swapped them on high-capacity SD cards. So there's maybe like five or four movies on an SD card, and all you do is you pop the, the SD card in the, in the TV, and you can watch your movies. Bada bing, bada boom. It's a very nice thing because, A... I do not like DVDs. I think they're a crap technology that gets scratched and destroyed, and I think they're stupid. I hate things on DVDs. Cassettes, on the other hand, I like. And I know a lot of people know that I do my videos in VHS. This is currently not being used in VHS. This is on a Sony Handycam. That's an idea of what I'm using. I look like crap, so ignore me. And why is this dirty? I gotta clean this. Anyhow, that's the camera I'm doing it on. It's one of these old DVD-based handycams. I'm not recording to the DVD because, of course, that would make me a hypocrite. <laughs> so anyhow, um, yeah, I don't like DVDs. But if we do want to do DVDs, I've got a Dell machine down there that's being used as a multimedia computer we can use. So right here is our Cisco cable box. This is an Explorer because, of course, um, I believe Aerosys owned the Explorer series. And Aerosys, I believe... No, Aerosys got bought out by Motorola. I don't know exactly who bought out the Explorer. I know Cisco bought them out, but I don't remember the company that owned these cable boxes before uh, Cisco did. Now, I will admit one thing. Cisco in the era of 2007 and above was really crappy. But lately, I've actually been kind of surprised. Their professional network gear is very good. I'm not going to lie about Cisco in that area. But when it comes to their home-grade stuff and their multimedia stuff, it's complete total shit. And you won't hear me say that about a lot of companies and a lot of products and devices, but I'm not going to lie. I have very bad experiences with Cisco's home equipment, home networking, and multimedia equipment. But this guy really surprised me. We actually have two of these, and this was replacing a very, very old Explorer cable box that we had out here for maybe like... That was maybe from the 90s and somehow was still being supported by our, or by our cable provider. We replaced it mainly for the factor that we were we had an HD TV and we were using the cable box with the H, a non HD cable box with an HD TV for a very long period of time. So my grandma finally said, "Well, we got an HD TV. I'll pay an extra twenty bucks to get an HD cable box." And I said, "Fine, that's up to you." Uh, down here, we just got some DVDs. Like I said, I don't really like DVDs, and we we used to have a collection like all the way around here. We gave a lot of them out, but this whole place is filled with DVDs. Um, 
starting from 2001 all the way up to 2010. We stopped buying DVDs, and we actually sold a lot of our DVDs that we didn't watch, because we didn't, like I said, I decoded them onto a SD card, and I kept them, and technically that is violating copyrights, but I'm not mass selling them, so please do not get on my ass about it, guys. I'm not mass selling them, and I would never do such a thing, because I think doing that is stupid. You don't take credit for things that other people have done. I hate it when people do that. So let's flip through the cable box here. Obviously, if you flip this on, you've got television. Um, I was watching SpongeBob, which I very much love. And of course, on the side here, and I got an HD. I just got one of these charter remotes. And we can flip to TV and we'll go to input. So the second input, which is the media center, which is what we use this machine on. This is a Dell, or not Precision, my bad. This is a Dell Optiplex GX620 that's been fairly upgraded and equipped pretty nicely. So let's go into F2 here and you can see the specs of this machine. Now, what do we do with this machine, you might ask? Well, a lot of people see no reason to have a computer hooked up to their, to their TV and stuff. This machine has been fairly equipped. So if we go into settings here, we'll go to processor info. Now, of course, the GX620 series is the only machine that the Dell released for its time that still ran on, uh, I, think, no, I don't think it was the only one, but I think these machines were capable of dual core systems, dual core processors, but the only processors that they were truly dual core with were, were Pentium D dual cores, and those things were terrible. I mean, like, to be honest with you, I think, honestly, a Pentium 4 hyper-threaded uh, Prescott could outperform those. I'm not even going to lie in that aspect. I'm getting a call... I have no idea who that's from, so I'm just going to ignore it. So, in this case, this machine has an Intel Pentium 4 at 3.20 GHz. That is a 64-bit. I believe it's either a Prescott, or I, I, it can't be a Northwood, but it's a pretty high-end processor uh, for what it is, for a Pentium 4, of course. And it's hyper-threaded, so we've got a lot of juice when it comes to doing multimedia tasks. And to be honest with you, yes, it is kind of low-end for what it is, but... DVD decoding takes nothing by today's standards. And back in the day, it was very, very hard for a machine to do such a thing. But by today's standards, DVD decoding is nothing. What you really need fast in DVD decoding is a good Northbridge that can handle, or the uh, front side bus, that can handle the data transfer speeds of reading off the DVD drive and importing through the Northbridge over to the uh, processor and then back to the video card through the North Bridge. As long as you have a good North Bridge in these systems, or at least some sort of separate DVD decoding card if you have a very old machine, you're able to do it such... I'm not going to get into old DVD decoding systems because that is a whole other story I do not want to get into. Anyhow, this guy only has 2 gigs of memory. We've got two standard 1 gig sticks, and as you can see, we're running at about 5... 533 megahertz. The reason why I don't have a lot of RAM is mainly for the fact that, like I said, this machine, his main purpose is to play music, do multimedia tasks such as play music, watch DVDs, play video online, none of which really requires that much RAM. And we're not streaming at 4K here, guys. Keep that in mind. We're just doing 1080p, and to be honest with you, you can get away with 2 gigs for such a thing just fine. I was going to throw 4 gigs in here, but I decided not to. Now, what do I got for DVD drives? Now, these systems were nice for the pure factor that they had both PAT, they both had ATA, and four serial ATAs. Now, I had some pretty nice Sony ATA drives kicking around, so I figured, screw it, I throw them in there. Oh, I got Star Wars in there. Man, what is up with these people? Again, that same person, I don't know. Or maybe I do know them. Hold on, let me take this. I hate telemarketers. She's this this girl calling about saying, "Oh, um, we can." I don't want to get into it. I just don't like telemarketers, guys. Sorry about that. Anyhow, so yeah, here's what the machine has. I got some really nice Sony DVD drives in there that are actually really fast and they read really fairly nicely. Uh, now, for the operating system, you guys can all guess. I got Windows 7 Ultimate 30. I think it's 64 on this guy. Um, now, a lot of people wonder, well, why would you throw in a 764-bit if you have only 2 gigs of RAM? And the fair honest question is, yes, Windows 7 is kind of a RAM hog compared to XP and, uh, Vista. Um, yeah, very surprising. But if you have Windows Update turned off, it runs just fine. So, as you can see, we've got the main login screen. This machine is indeedly 
hooked into my domain controller, which means if you wanted to, you could log on to your standard accounts on every single computer in this house, which means my main, my main account for my laptop, it, that my school laptop can log into that machine, as well as this machine and all my data will be there. One of the major perks I did this for is because sometimes I have a wireless keyboard or mouse, not currently here right now, but I have like a keyboard and with a trackpad on it, it's wireless. So what happens is I'll actually sit down here and I'll use it and my grandma, if she wants to, she can log into her account that she uses over there and go ahead and just watch, uh, just go on the web with it. Fortunately though, like I said, this TV is a little bit small for such a task and therefore it's kind of hard to read print. Anyhow, logging in this machine is easy. As you can see, it's very easy. Uh, this machine does have Steam on it, and the reason why is because sometimes I'll actually stream my video games from my PC in my room over to here. And quite frankly, it's nice. Uh, Steam Steam streaming is awesome, but my uh, my ten my ten megabit switch that I have downstairs, yes, I know it is very old, but it's it's more of a hub if anything. But it has a little bit of problems really doing such a thing at such high settings. So doing so is kind of a difficulty. And yeah, this machine runs just fine. You can play DVDs off of it, which is nice, because like I said, the main purpose of that machine is a DVD machine, as well as to play videos online and to watch YouTube. I watch YouTube out here a lot. Uh, during the weekends, when uh, my grandma goes to bed, um, that's the majority of the time, and when I get off playing video games, if I do decide to play video games that day, I can finally go ahead and watch my YouTube videos out here in the, in the living room. Uh, when my grandma goes to sleep, and that's normally what I do. Uh, I'll stay up maybe until 2, 3 in the morning, watch my YouTube videos, get caught up in all the stuff that I missed over the week, and then I'll head to bed, um, because that's what I do on Fridays, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, this is a nice little machine. Not terribly bad. As you can see, it's a dual-threaded Pentium 4, which is nice. Of course, though, specs-wise, it does kind of stay up there in terms of performance, but the machine is not bad. I truly do love this machine, and it runs really amazing. I'll go ahead and shut her down, though, because, well, I don't need her on anymore. As for the Xbox One, you might be wondering, well, why do you have an Xbox One here? Well, truth be told, I'm not very fond with uh, consoles anymore. I used to do console gaming a lot. Here, let me turn the light on. I used to do console gaming a lot back when my computers had... I used to play on my PC for Minecraft a lot. I, I don't know if I told you guys the story, but I used to do... Minecraft PC version, I got it in the beta, like towards the end of the beta, and I had a Minecraft server that I played on a lot, that I had hosted here. Unfortunately though, I was no longer able to play Minecraft and connect to multiplayer servers due to some random problem that Mikey Grabber had. It would not allow the ports to connect over through Minecraft, so I gave up on Minecraft, and I started playing Xbox, and I got an Xbox 360 that Christmas, and I got gold, and I got a couple of games, and then I got into GTA, and that kind of stuff. That was many years ago. Of course, I still have my 360. It is modded and it got console banned. A long story on that. But I got an Xbox One mainly for the factor on GTA 5. I had a crew called Gateway. We were a military-based clan and we were pretty good. I mean, like, we were kick-ass. We I really liked it. And I got the Xbox One mainly for the sheer factor that I'd be able to live on with Gateway. Gateway kind of died, though, because a lot of my friends lately have gotten very busy with their lives, and no one has really cared about console anymore. I was originally going to sell this guy. I was making plans to sell it, and I should have jumped on it when I could, because I got this thing for $400, the standard, like, Xbox One kit with a remote and controller, and that's it. That's all I have with it. And at the time, it was $400. I got this thing when I, maybe a month or two after it came out. And I got really mad because I'm thinking, okay, I gotta sell this thing, it's dropping in price. This guy got to about $300, and then I didn't act on it, and then as soon as I found out the Xbox One S was released, I'm like, oh no, this thing's worth nothing, because the Xbox One S is only $300 now. I'm thinking, okay, the resale value of this thing is gone. There's no way I'm gonna be able to sell it for anything good. So, I'm assuming the resale value of this machine were to be with everything included, which I probably wouldn't include my controller or the headset, I'd only contrude the Xbox with the with whatnot, and I probably would only get about fifty to sixty bucks for it. Um, that's my guess. So I really didn't care of selling it once that happened. I just said, okay, fuck it. I'll hold on to it. There's no point of selling it. It's not going to go for anything. But we'll see. Um, but the whole reason of it is to play Blu-rays. Now the computer on the bottom, and for those computer enthusiasts, you might know, Blu-ray DVD decoding is not easy with PC hardware. 
I mean, like, it's not as easy as it might look. It's actually pretty hard for most PCs. And the Xbox One can do it just fine. And that's kind of the reason why it's out here. We only have, like, one Blu-ray disc. So, yeah, that's all it's meant for. So, yeah, that's all I have to show you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later.